Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habita fillah continue on in our study of nasiha uh we reach the fifth point in the treaties the da'i or the person who calls to Islam who engages in calling people to this religion has two legislated paths that he can follow while doing so and both are supported by evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah how many paths two paths the first masalaka ta'lif wa targhib the path of leniency and encouragement this is the first path so the first path is to be lean uh to be gentle uh in in your dawa efforts and to encourage people We're talking about the rewards of being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and and the rewards in this life as well as the rewards in the hereafter and so on and so forth <clears throat> the second path masalak al-hajr wa tarhib the second path is the path of boycotting and chasing people away or uh bringing fear to people i would say would probably be a better way of uh articulating that tarhib you know bringing you know <clears throat> calling them and trying to instill fear in their hearts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his punishments talking about the hellfire talking about the hypocrites talking about those things the 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 various punishments for doing various sins and so on and so forth this is to strike fear in the believer's heart or those people who are being called uh in order to have them make tauba in order to come back to Allah azza wa jalla The truth of the matter is that he is mistaken if he treads either path unconditionally. So nothing is on the itlaq that you're going to do one way all the time. And that takes fiqh fi dawa as we talked about. Uh and so the truth of the matter is that he is mistaken if he treads either path unconditionally with everyone. Instead, what is appropriate is for him to choose the path with everyone who opposes the truth that will most likely bring about his acceptance of the truth and secure his return. to what is correct so if ta'lif you know being lenient is more beneficial for the one who is uh, disobedient and more likely to bring about his rectification then this is what is legislated but if boycotting is better and more effective then this is what is legislated again this is fiqh fi din man yurid the law bi khairin yafqahu fi din the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whenever along one's good for a person he gives him understanding of the religion This requires fiqh fi din to know when the, there's to look at the harms and the benefits of issues to look at when it's more you know to have this hikma to know when it's more applicable to be gentle with uh, someone to encourage them or to be stern in in hopes that that's going to bring them back or there's other reasons that hajr and cutting off uh someone is legislated and we'll talk more about that as we get into the treaties He says if he takes the path of ta'lif with the one who legislatively deserves to be boycotted then he is considered to be negligent and remissful so meaning that if you're you're gentle when this person really needs hajr hajr would have been the most appropriate way by cutting him off would have been the most appropriate way because his bid'ah is so uh you know uh, you know is so severe or that you know there was a good chance that he was going to come back because all of his companions were cutting him off for a serious sin or a serious bid'ah that he had involved in then this would have been a mistake to to have not made hajr to have been lean oh yeah just keep doing the bid'ah akhi it's okay we know it's the struggle we know the desires we know this no that may not have been appropriate under those circumstances and whosoever adopts the path of hajr with the one who deserves to be treated with kindness then he is considered to be someone who is harsh rigid and chases people away Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said this type of boycotting varies depending on the strength and effectiveness of the ones employing the boycott as well as their weakness and ineffectiveness in doing such it also depends on their multitude or scarcity Without a doubt the objective of boycotting is to be 
is to reprimand and discipline the one being boycotted and to keep the layman from following him. So if the benefit in this is preponderant and more likely to lessen the evil, then boycotting becomes recommended and admissible. However, if this is not the case, rather none is deterred from their disobedience, not the one being boycotted nor other than him, but it only intensifies the evil coupled with the weakness and ineffectiveness of the one employing the boycott to the extent that harm outweighs the benefit, then at this point boycotting is not recommended. So that's very uh, a very important statement by Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, which really kind of deals with many issues uh, regarding making hajr, you know, talking about whether it's going to be effective or not. Is it going to increase the person in harm and in harmful... Uh, their harmful behavior or harmful aqidah or their harmful uh, transgressions or not? Is it going to, how is it going to affect the people around them? You know, all of these things are to be taken into consideration and that requires having fiqh of how to deal with a mukhalif, fiqh mukhalif. <clears throat> then he said, Shaykh Islam also said, leniency is more beneficial and effective for some people than boycotting. And boycotting is more beneficial and effective for some people than leniency. Due to this, the Prophet wasallam used to be lenient with some people and boycott others. Similarly, it is legislatively recommended to go to war with the enemy sometimes and at other times to make a truth, truce and sometimes to take the jizya from, all, from them. All of this is dependent upon the circumstances and benefits in doing so and the response of the imams of Ahl Sunnah like Imam Ahmed and others in relation to this issue, which is founded upon this principles, letting us know that the Imams of the Sunnah, they took into consideration these principles. These are the principles of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah of how to deal with uh, uh, the mistakes of others and mistakes uh, with regards to dealing with Ahl Sunnah or mistakes with regards to dealing with those who differ with Ahl Sunnah. Shaykh al-Islam then clarifies the mistake of the one who applies boycotting and leniency absolutely in every situation without consideration of the principle mentioned previously. So again, these principles are there for practicing, not just for taking one mokif all the time. Every time you see uh, someone you consider to be a muqtadiya or you think that they're making mistakes, and perhaps they are making mistakes, that doesn't make you, mean you make hajr of everyone uh, all the time. No. You have to look again at the Masari wa Mufasid. Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Indeed, there are those who apply boycotting and leniency absolutely. They apply boycotting and reprimand at times in which they were not commanded to do so. And because they didn't do what they were ordered to do, they didn't achieve the outcome they desired. Perhaps by applying hajr, boycotting, they have forfeited some of the wajibat, meaning the obligatory acts, as well as the uh, mustahabbat, the recommended acts. Also, by doing so, they have embarked upon some of the muharramat, those things which are impermissible, uh, contrary to those who have abandoned boycotting altogether, for they didn't boycott those whom they were commanded to from those who indulge in evil, innovative practices. So again, it's very important to look at the, the, the pros and cons, if you will, of uh, benefiting uh, of making a hajr, uh, boycotting someone, and having some understanding of when it is, it's better to be uh, gentle and kind and when it's better to be stern with someone. And there are countless examples, and I'm sure many of us have experienced countless uh, scenarios in which it was better to cut off people. I've met takfiris that I couldn't have any longer, we couldn't have any amicable discussions. It was better for me to cut off and then it was known and my companions would ask me, why don't you, you know, give him salams and this? He's a Muslim. You know, they didn't understand anything about these issues of hajjah and stuff. And I said, I, I you know, this guy's a straight mubtadia and he is uh, causing harm in the community and spreading uh, takfiri ideology. I, I, you know, I have no more, nothing to say with this guy. This guy only wants to debate and every time we had our discussions, and stuff, I only saw tajawas from him. I saw a transgression and him going beyond the bounds. And he and he's on he's on what he's upon. So uh, I saw that it was more beneficial to cut this guy off and let him know, and and let those around him, his companions, until 
One day, and this is true, one day one of his companions, because I boycotted him for a long time, you know, when I would see him, I really wouldn't have anything to say. I might say, I might say salams to him sometimes, you know, or whatever the case may be. For the most part, because he was the underling of this guy who, when Allah and Ham got deported uh, back to Somalia or wherever, he, uh, uh, this other brother, eventually, through someone else, they came to me and they said, Khalid, why are you, you know, still with, why are you still like this with so-and-so? You know, he's an imam now at such and such masjid, he's doing this, and he, he said he's not on that stuff anymore. And I said, Alhamdulillah, that's a na'mah. So you never know, <clears throat> I doubt that had anything to do with my uh, da'wah and my effect upon him, but the point is, is by having that motive, it was very clear. You know what I'm upon. You know that I'm not with that, that takfiri, extremism and uh that going bound the bounds and that thing which is just plain and simple simple you know as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever uh, innovates in some in this affair of ours that which is not from it it's rejected i'm not with the rejected ones i'm not with that i'm not with their program of of uh of spilling blood and wanton violence and evil and, and declaring other Muslims to be disbelievers without the right to do so and uh, and so on and so forth <clears throat> from their ideology. So it's very important to know when to apply these principles and when uh, when and how to apply these principles. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.